Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Today, I'm going to talk about Salesforce, how to integrate it into your Flare project so that you can generate output in Flare and push it up to Salesforce and your end users can uh, see all this stuff in articles up on Salesforce. Okay, so what you don't want to do is just jump right into Flare and start creating files and clicking things and just hope that it all comes out all right. There are some things you need to be aware of, some things you need to set, um, both on the Salesforce side and on the Flare side. We're going to start with the Salesforce side. So I'm going to jump in there and we're going to take a look around and see what needs to be done. Okay, so in Salesforce, things can get a little bit muddy because there are different types of accounts that you can have. There are different views for navigating. So you could have a, uh, a classic account with a single language. You could have a classic account with multiple languages, or you could have a lightning account with one language or a lightning, a lightning account that's multilingual. Uh, and then on top of that, you could be navigating around in classic view, or you could be navigating around in knowledge view. So depending on your situation, things will be a little bit different. Um, my goal here is not to teach you how to use everything in all the different you know, configurations in Salesforce. For that, you should really refer to the Salesforce uh, documentation. But what I am, I am going to walk you through this and show you how I have things set up. So just, just so that you know, I have a Lightning multilingual account, but I'm going, going to navigate around in a classic view because I just find it easier to do. So first thing that you need to be aware of, first thing that you need to do on Salesforce is make sure that you have knowledge enabled. And this needs to be done at the user level and also at the site level. So I'm going to click up here. I'm going to click on setup, go into here. Uh, did it take there? Okay, there it goes. I was already there. All right. So over on the left, um, want to go into manage users and then users. And you can see I've got multiple users in here. And the one I want to make sure that I have set up um, in, in this video, I'm going to do this one right here, Madcap Simon, that user. And notice that Matt, um, Madcap Simon is using knowledge author. That's the profile that we have um, that Madcap Simon is on. So I'm going to click on edit. And in here, there are just a couple of permissions that you wanna make sure that you have. One of them is knowledge user. So you wanna make sure that that's enabled. And then another one that is likely that you're going to want is down here called Salesforce CRM content user and select that, enable that. And the reason why this one is good to have is if you're using a shared asset library, which we recommend, and I'm gonna take you through that later. So that is the user. And now you want to come over and look at, uh, at the site. And so I'm, instead of just navigating, I'm just gonna type in knowledge here and there's knowledge settings. That's what I want. <clears throat> And you come down here and you can see, all right, I've got Lightning Knowledge enabled. That's that's my uh, account, a Lightning account. All right, so I have it set up both uh, for the user and the site. So I'm ready for the next thing. And the next thing is the profile. And remember, I have that, I've got that Knowledge Author profile. And I want to make sure I've got, there's a bunch of uh, permissions that you want to make sure that you have. So I'm going to look in profiles. There are filtered. So it's under manage users profiles. And you come down and there are uh, lots of uh, profiles in here. I'm going to click next and there's knowledge author. That's the one that I want. So I'm going to click on edit there. And then you scroll down and there are lots and lots and lots of settings. Of course, we're not even going to try to go through everything. That would be crazy. <clears throat> what you want to do is come down here to administrative perm permissions. And there's just, there's a lot of permissions here. I don't know if they're going for a world record, but if they are, they're doing pretty good. So uh, these are all in alphabetical order. I'm just going to put up here on the screen, these are the ones that you want to uh, make sure that you enable under administrative permissions. So enable those, and then you come down here 
to general user permissions, and there's a whole bunch of other permissions. And I'm gonna put up on the screen, these are the permissions that you wanna make sure that you have enabled. And if you see, uh, there are the ones that start with article translation, and, and those are important if you're, if you're going to be doing uh, multilingual stuff. Okay, so just make sure you have those set. And then you come down here, all the way down to knowledge base permissions. And here, you just want to make sure that you have all of these enabled, all those check boxes for read, create, edit, delete, view all. And then modify all is good to have because what, where that's useful is if you delete articles on Salesforce or you, you archive them and then you go into archive and you want to delete them all together, that's going to allow you to do that. So those are the profile permissions. Next, we want to talk about article types. And you need to, in Flare, when you're setting up your destination file, you need to point to an article type. So situations different with, uh, depending on whether you're in Lightning or Classic account. Classic accounts, you can create lots of article types. Uh, so you just decide what you want to do. In, um, in Lightning, you can only create one article type, but you can also create record types, which are sort of another way of, of classifying your articles. And when you create these article uh, types, you want to make sure when you, you, you want to have a field in there, um, you want to have a rich text field. That's very important. So <clears throat> I'm going to come over here uh, and filter, look for knowledge. Object setup is what I want. So this is a Lightning account. So it's under knowledge object setup. If you had a classic account, you'd be looking for article types. So click in here and you can see there are a whole bunch of fields in here, field types. And we created one called content and you can see it's got a rich text area. And the reason why you want to make sure that you have a rich text area is this, is that Salesforce doesn't like external style sheets, and JavaScript, and those are things that are important when you have a Flare project, when you're working through that to get the look and feel that you want. And so you want to be able to retain your formatting. You don't want to lose it all. So uh, a rich text area is one, one thing that's going to help with that. So make sure that you create a field type, it's got a rich text area. Now, categories is another thing we wanna take a look at. And uh, this is here under data category setup right here. <clears throat> so click on that. Now in Salesforce, you, got, you can create category groups and then under each uh, category group, then you can have a, a main category and then other subcategories, however you want, just to organize things. Now, when you are publishing from Flare to Salesforce, you don't have to direct things into any category at all. You don't have to use this. Um, it's just if, if you want to. And you can do a couple of things if you do want to use categories. One is you could just direct all of your um topics, they become articles up on Salesforce, and you could direct those to be associated with certain default categories, one or more default categories. And I, you can see I've got here under products, this is my category group, one of my category groups, and I've got all products, it's the main category. And then under that, got these different um, categories, subcategories, and one of them I called other. And so you're going to see once I get into Flare, I'm just going to use that as a default category. So that's one thing that you can do. But another thing that you can do is you can map your uh, TOC, the nodes in your TOC, to the categories that are in, uh, in Salesforce. So that when you publish, if you've got matching category names in here, they'll just go into those categories. So that's, that's pretty nice, but you need, to, you need to set these categories up in Salesforce. They don't get created automatically. You want to uh, look at your TOC and your categories on Salesforce and just, you wanna make sure that they match up exactly. And the other thing, just to mention real quickly about these categories is you wanna make sure that they're active. Uh, if they're deactivated, 
um, then it's, you know, that's not going to work. So that's, you probably do have them active, but you just want to make sure. All right, so categories. So another thing is uh, unique names. So these all are category names in here. And you can see that as I expand, there's more. And if I hover over one like smartphones, you can see I've got my category name and my um, category unique name, smart underscore phones. And then that smartphones also is down. I also have a category down called smartphones down below. And if I hover over that same category name, but the unique name is, is different. It's category underscore phones underscore computers in this case. And that can that's gonna come in handy. You can map to unique names instead of the category names if you want. And that can come in handy if, if you have a, a case where you've got a topic, the same topic that's in multiple places in your TOC, like smartphones is here and here, and it'd be in your TOC like that too. And you want them to have to, um, to have different, you know, names. So <clears throat> that, uh, take a look at whether or not you want to use unique names. Shared asset library, I mentioned that before, some of those permissions have to do with the shared asset library. So here's what happens when you publish from Flare to Salesforce, a log file is included and the log file is necessary because it lets the system know, oh, okay, these topics are becoming articles and they need to go here and it just directs everything. So you have to have those. Well, each user in Salesforce, uh, you have a private um, library. And so if you don't choose a, a shared asset library, those, that, those log files will just go in there. But if you've got multiple authors that are also publishing from Flare up to Salesforce, it's a really good idea to set up a shared asset library. And then in Flare, you're gonna see a little bit later, we're gonna to point to that. And that's just gonna help with your workflow. It's gonna keep things um, working, working better if you have a shared asset library. So shared asset library. So we have these, um, these quick link things up here that we set and there's libraries. <clears throat> and one day this will open or starts to go. <clears throat> there it's loaded. So you can see the libraries that we've set up. We've got a couple of shared asset libraries in here. One's called asset library. And then we set up a separate one um, called Flare Publish Logs with the idea that, okay, that's the one we're going to direct to, to keep our Flare logs. So uh, when you create, if you're going to create a shared asset library, just make sure that all of your authors that are going to be working there are members of this, uh, of that library so that they can access it. Okay, and uh, the next thing that we want to talk about before we jump over onto the Flare side are some Salesforce limitations. So Salesforce limits each um, each article to uh, 131,072 characters. And so that sounds like uh, a lot, and it is, and it is a lot. But there are a couple of things that can affect that. Um, I, I actually, I'm not sure if it's per article or per, per field, but there is this limitation of 131,000 some characters. So a couple of things that can affect this. Number one is if you've got tables in your topics in Flare. So tables are kind of unique. If you if you inserted a table in Flare and then you look at the markup, you're going to see all these tags. There's a whole bunch of tags and it's necessary because these represent rows and columns and cells. And, and so you just get a lot more characters. So if you've got a lot of tables, that's going to impact your, your character, your total count. Another thing that's going to impact it is uh, converting your styles from your style sheet to inline. Remember, Salesforce doesn't like external style sheets. So we had to, had, have to work around that. And one way we work around that is that rich text area that you're going to have on your article type. And the other is there's going to be um, a uh, field, uh, an option that you're going to click that's going to convert 
your styles to inline styles. So they're not going to reference this external style sheet. And what happens because you do that, that's going to increase your character limit. So just be aware of that if you uh, are publishing and you end up with you, you end up having troubles because of this character limit. It, chances are pretty good it's due to one of those two things. Okay, so that takes care of the Salesforce side. Now we're going to go and look at the Flare side. Now on the Flare side, some other things to be aware of. First of all, when you're publishing from Flare to Salesforce, you need to be using a clean XHTML target. Flare has lots of other uh, target types, but you need to be using clean XHTML. Second thing, I like to tell people to think of their content in, in Flare as collections of content because you might want a certain group of content, publish that up to Salesforce, then maybe there's an entirely different set of content and you want to publish that up you know, separately. If you're going to do that, I would uh, make sure that there are three types of, of files that are really important in this whole process. One is a uh, target that we talked about. Another is the destination file. And third is the TOC. And those just kind of all converge together. So for each collection of content, I would have a separate target, destination file, TOC. Now, if you consider everything in your Flare project, you know, just one collection, okay, just you just need one of each of those things. But you don't want to have, say, you know, one, one target, one destination file, and then a whole bunch of TOCs, and you keep going into the target and swapping out the TOCs. Don't do that. That's going to mess you up. Have, just keep a, a separate one, a separate target, destination file, TOC for each collection of content. Okay, so that is another thing. Then you need to consider your TOC structure. If you plan to be mapping to categories on Salesforce and you want these to be named exactly, you want to have the structure exactly the same. So let's actually hop in and see these side by side. Okay, so I've got Salesforce here on the left and you can see my uh, category groups and categories. And then over on the right, we've got Flare. This is my TOC. And so I've got uh, at the first level, I've got products and I've got vendors and those match up with my category groups. And then I can just expand everything like that. And you can see underneath products, I just have one level here directly under it that matches with all products named exactly the same. So you, you can only have one child uh, directly under that category group. So I only have one child here. And the same thing with vendors, there's just one category under that. And these things right now are not, they're not linked. That's why you see the flags in them. I mean, so you, these books don't need to be linked to any topics in Flare, um, but you know, books can be linked to topics uh, in Flare. And so then you go down further from that, things don't necessarily need to be in the same order. It's just that the, the names need to be same, the same and the levels need to be the same. So here I've got consumer electronics, consumer electronics, and then um, underneath that, I've got smartphones, cameras, audio. You can see uh, how it all just lines up. And so if you have something that doesn't line up, that, that might end up in your uh, default category that you specify. And so again, default category that I'm going to use is this other one right here. Um, but you know, they give my default category could be any, anything. All right. So the TOC structure, that's important that that lines up if you plan to do mapping that way. All right. Um, the next thing is, uh, let me see, converting to inline form as uh, we talked about that briefly, and we're going to get into the target a little later, and you're going to see this exact option, but that is something that you definitely want to do. You want to make sure that you have that setting to convert your, um, your styles from your style sheet into inline formatting. Another thing is, that has to do with styles, and I'm going to expand Flare so that we can take a closer look at this. I'm going to open up my style sheet in here. <clears throat> there is a body tag, which is one of the most outer um, tags that you're going to have in a topic. For example, I'm going to open up um, this electronics topic over here, and you can see that 
I've got HTML, that's the outermost tag. And then there's body within that. And within that is really the all the little details of how your um, topic comes together. You've got an H1 tag here for heading one, P tag for paragraph. If I had a list under here, you'd have maybe a UL or a L, um, a UL or an OL tag with LI tags within that. And then you could have a table with all the table tags and an image. You know, there's all these tags in here. Now, normally what we tell people, it's a really good practice in Flare, is to set things on this body tag that you want to be shared everywhere else, unless something specifically overrides it. For example, maybe Helvetica is your main font. And instead of setting Helvetica on all these individual tags, you could go into Flare and set it on your body style. And that way everything just uses it. Normally we tell people, yeah, do that. That's a best practice. But unfortunately, Salesforce isn't going to honor the, the body style, the body tag. And so in that case, you want to do the next best thing, which is to set that on your individual styles in here. So you would set Helvetica on your H1, Helvetica on your paragraph tag, and so on. So that's just another important thing uh, to keep in mind because you might think, oh, I set this, but where's the, where's that where's that style setting? <clears throat> where's that property? And it's not there. All right, another thing that has to do with style sheets, you can set images on things in here like lists. Uh, you can, instead of those square or round bullets, you can have images that are that represent your bullets maybe or you could have a background image on something well the problem with salesforce is it isn't going to bring those over so just keep that in mind if you have an image set on a style that's just not going to come over into salesforce all right uh, another thing about um, this whole process is that this is going from flare to Salesforce, output from Flare to Salesforce. A lot of people ask us, hey, do you go the other way? Do you import from Salesforce into Flare? No, we don't do that right now. And so there isn't this kind of syncing thing that happens. And, and the reason why that is such an important thing to understand is that when you publish from Flare up to Salesforce, you then don't want to go into those articles on Salesforce and start changing them making edits into those. Not unless you are sure that forever and ever you're done publishing from Flare to Salesforce, but chances are you're gonna go back into Flare over time, make changes and then republish and it's gonna update those articles in Salesforce. If you go into Salesforce, make changes um, and then republish from Flare, it's just gonna overwrite that stuff. And that's not a great thing. <laughs> you're just gonna lose work. Um, there are also some different options that you have for excluding content, because maybe you don't want everything, all of your stuff from your Flare project to get up on Salesforce. Well, you have options, and we're going to take a look at um, those. One of them is in your destination file, which we'll talk about in the next section, or one of these upcoming sections here. Uh, so you can, you can specify things in your destination file. You can also use conditions. Uh, so We've got a condition tag set here, and you could create specific uh, conditions that are designed to hide things from Salesforce. And then you would apply those conditions to, you could apply them to topics, you could apply them to content within topics and exclude things that way. So that's the second. And the third is this option that we're gonna take a look at later in, um, in the target that allows you to quickly and easily exclude you know, certain chunks of things. But just be aware that you're not limited to just one way of doing this. There are different ways to limit things from getting in. Uh, another thing that we wanna talk about is uh, multilingual. So I said that there are accounts up on Salesforce that are multilingual accounts and Flare lets you create a multilingual uh, output. Now this is a, an HTML5 target. That's not the target we're gonna use. We're gonna create a clean X HTML target, but these targets, uh, these online targets are the same in that you go into the language 
tab in there and you can see I've got one row in here for the link, the, you know, the original language that I'm using English United States. But if I sent my Flare project out for translation and brought those, you know, back into Flare, I would see multiple rows in here for each language. So the project could generate multilingual output, push that up to Salesforce that is supported. So just keep that in mind. And the final thing that I want to bring up on the Flare side is really, I encourage you to practice publishing because there's gonna, you're going to see as we go through this, there's lots of switches and knobs, and you may not be exactly sure what things are going to turn out to be once you get them up on Salesforce. I would encourage you, especially in a sandbox, to publish things uh, from Flare to Salesforce, see how they look, and then maybe delete those things on um, on Salesforce and then click other things in Flare. Try again, just practice publishing till you get just what you want. Okay, so that's all the preliminary stuff, Salesforce side, Flare side. Now we're gonna get actually into this process, work through it, see how it goes. All right, so we're finally ready to get into Flare and start putting all of this together. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have Madcap Connect for Salesforce installed. Now, this usually happens during the process of first installing Flare. When you double click that exe file and the wizard opens, the first page of the wizard has a couple of options. One says default and the other says custom. Now, if you just left default the way it was and you just click next, next, next until you got through the wizard, you miss the option that's in there to install Madcap Connect for Salesforce. Now, it might have already been selected. You might be good to go. And maybe you're thinking, well, I installed Flare, but I don't know if I have this thing or not. No problem. Don't worry. What you can do is go into your control panel and you can see if you have it installed. And if you don't, then you can install it. So let's look at that. So I've got my control panel open. You can see it's in programs, programs and features. And I've got a couple of versions of Flare here. Actually, I'm going to select Flare 2021, click uninstall change. And this uh, piece of UI comes up. And it's, a, and it's just basically telling me, hey, you got this installed. What do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to modify it, repair it, uninstall it? I select modify. And these are the options that you would have seen the first time around in installing Flare if you had selected custom. And you can select any of these. The one you want to make sure that you have enabled is Madcap Connect for Salesforce. If you don't have it, in, uh, if you didn't have that enabled, just click it to enable it. Click next, go through the wizard. You're good. Uh, and then if you already have it installed, like I do, then you can just close out of here and you're good. So that's the first thing. That's really easy. You just got to make sure that that's installed. That's going to allow you to do all the other things we're going to talk about. All right. So we've got that installed now. We want to get into Flare and start creating these files. So let's begin with the destination file. Now, as I said before, there the three main file types that kind of can come together to make all this happen is the target file, uh, the destination file, and the TOC. Now, we already have a TOC uh, created. I showed it to you before. You can see under TOCs, I've got Main TOC, maybe I want to use that in this project for some other purpose, maybe a big help system, something like that. But I created this separate one. I named it Salesforce. You can name things whatever you want. And that's the TOC that we looked at before. So the second type of file is a destination file. And that's where you're going to give Flare all the rules, all the settings that you want for how things are going to get published. Uh, you can see here in the project organizer on the left, I've got this destinations folder, nothing in it yet because I haven't created any destination files. So I'm going to right click that, click uh, add destination, give it a name. Um, I already before I had typed in one called Salesforce. So I'm just going to keep that name that gives me an idea of what this destination file is all about because destination files can be used for lots of different things, not just Salesforce. Uh, it's really just a an automatic way to take your output, copy it, put it somewhere else. We're, we just happen to want to put it on Salesforce. So the new destination file has been added here. The destination editor is open on, on the right. <clears throat> Under type, I select Madcap Connect 
for Salesforce. Now, the next thing that you need to do is activate it. So you just simply click this option right there, and then you go ahead and put in your Salesforce key. I'm going to just copy it from this other monitor, other side that I've got here, put it in there, click next. Now we fill in our information. And next and next again, because we want an internet activation and finish and okay, so it's activated. So this changes to deactivate. Now the next thing you want to do is put in your login credentials. Mine are already in here because I had done this previously. So it says credentials are set in green. But if you haven't done it yet, you'll need to go through this. So let me just click on this and show you. This will come up. You just simply put in your username, password. But this is one place where people might potentially hit a roadblock. This is a browser-based window. And so this could come up blank for some people. And the reason why in the vast majority of cases why that would happen is that your company is using a proxy server. Things are locked down and they're just not letting you in. So no worries, just close that. There's a way around that. You select file options. And in here, uh, in the options dialog, lots of tabs, you want the proxy server tab. Maybe you need to get together with your system administrator and uh, put in the information in here, or you can do it yourself. Then you click OK. After you click OK, I would close out of Flare altogether, relaunch it, start over with your destination file. Uh, I don't have the proxy server issue here. I'm seeing the, the um, username and password fields. So I'm going to click Cancel. Go back in here. You fill that out, click login. Then what's going to happen is you're going to get another page that says basically, uh, hey, we want to make sure you know that uh, that you are who you say you are. We're going to send a verification code to this email address. It does. You go to your email, get the verification code, plop it in here and continue. And then there's another page where you just have to click allow to give Flare access uh, to everything. So that's that. Uh, so pretty simple, got that done. And then there's this login to sandbox field. And as I mentioned before, I encourage people to, um, to pu practice publishing. And so the sandbox is a perfect way to do that. So you could select that, go through different scenarios of options. Uh, and then when you got everything just the way that you want, come in and deselect that and then go through and do your real publishing. Now we move down and there are all these fields that you need to complete. And we're gonna go through each one. So some of these at the top, these are pr pretty simple. Article type, we talked about how you have to have an article and this uh, article has to have, article type has to have a rich text field. So in my case, I have a lightning account. And so I only have one article type and this is named knowledge and there it is, don't have to do anything. Rich text field, um, we have actually on Salesforce, we set up a couple of them. Uh, and one of them we called content, one we called related notes. We could have a bunch of rich text fields, but the one that we decide we want to use is this one called content. Okay, that's where all of our topics are, the, that content's going to go, it's going to populate in that field. Record types, so Lightning allows you to create record types. And uh, so we had already created a few. Uh, products, services, training, and I'm just going to select record, uh, the products one. And then shared asset library, that's what we talked about before, about getting your logs into the shared library so that multiple authors can, um, can be working really as one unit like this. And we had created a couple, and one of them we named Flare Publish Logs, and I'm going to select that. Now things get a little bit more involved, come down and there's category mapping. So we talked about how you can use your TOC uh, map to that kind of line things up and, and your articles will be placed, will become associated with those categories. Or you can have a default category. I had showed you that I created a category called other with the idea that, hey, uh, if I want to use a default category, I'm just going to put stuff in there. And so then you've got that and you've got these other TOC to map options. Well, we're going to go through 
this first scenario, let's just select default category, which means that we're not really going to be mapping to our TOC. We're just going to take all of our uh, topics that become articles and they're just all going to become associated with that one category. Now, if you don't want to, you don't have to publish to a category. And if you don't want to, you just leave this selected the way it is and leave this blank, the default categories field. But in this case, I am going to select one. So I'm going to click this. This is going to bring up my category groups over here and I can, you know, select whatever I want. I can select multiple categories if I want to use more, more than one default category. I'm just going to select this one under products, all products, other. Click OK. That one's completed. After that, there are channels. And uh, so Salesforce lets you set up channels and, and use that. And uh, you already have internal app selected in here. And then you can click this. And this lets you choose these other uh, channels. <clears throat> and I'm just going to select a couple of these. It's just another way to configure your stuff. And then coming on down, there's exclusions. Now, in one of the previous sessions, I talked about how there are really three basic ways to decide, hey, I don't want certain content to go up to Salesforce. This is one. And so this already comes populated with a few different files default.htm these are separated by commas default underscore csh.htm because these are uh, common output uh, files that get created but um, you probably don't care about those being up on salesforce and so they're just kind of provided here but you could click comma or type comma and add other topic names in here if you wanted to keep those out there are better ways to exclude these uh, other two alternatives, but you can do that. You can use that field for that. Uh, the other, another way to exclude things is the conditions, which we talked about before. You could create a condition uh, for the purpose of excluding things from Salesforce, and then you could apply that to topic files over in the Content Explorer or to content within them. And then at the, in the target, which we'll get to in the next uh, section, you can say exclude things that have this condition. So that is a very common way to exclude things. And then the third way we're going to cover when we get to the target. Article summary, this is really just metadata. Uh, so you can provide um, a brief summary of your articles. This could be this would be global. So this summary would be applied to all of those articles uh, that get published up to Salesforce. Probably most people, though, will uh, do this more at the topic level in Flare. So I could right click on any topic file in the Content Explorer, select Properties. And in, in Topic Properties on that tab, you've got this description field. That's the same thing, except it's just at a lower level for that specific topic, which becomes an article. So you could provide a summary there as well. So if you if you have it in both places, the, the one set on the topic will win. The next thing has to do with how URLs are named when they're published. And you've got a lot of options here. You could <clears throat> tell Flare and, and Salesforce to just generate a unique URL for you. So, and the preview field down here tells you, like, gives you an idea of what's going on based on your selection up here. So you'd have your, you know, whatever topic dash title, and then this random series of numbers and letters here. Uh, if you selected one of the others, this preview would change accordingly. And you also have the option of so if you have context sensitive help identifiers, if you're creating context sensitive help, well, you can use that also. And we're, we'll go through that in a little bit. <clears throat> and then you could also base it on a topic title or a topic path and add a prefix or a suffix over here. We're going to go through that too. For this first go around, let's just select generate a unique URL. Moving on down under publish options, include images. So even though Salesforce isn't going to honor the images that are set in your style sheet, if you insert images into your topics, those will be brought over into Salesforce if you have this checkbox selected. Publish articles. <clears throat> OK, I'm going to select that. This has to do with the 
publish status up on Salesforce. See, when we use the word publish, there's publish from the perspective of Flare and there's publish from the perspective of Salesforce. So Flare's perspective on publishing, what we mean is you're gonna generate your output, then you're gonna click the publish button and that's gonna move all of this stuff up to Salesforce. You're moving your output from one place to another, a copy of your output. From the Salesforce perspective, what this what the word publish means is you've got things in a draft mode in Salesforce, and then you can then move them to a published status when things are ready for people to see. This checkbox has to do with Salesforce's perspective. So what this is doing, if I had this deselected and I generated and published, moved, when I say published, I say move things from Salesforce up to or from Flare up to Salesforce, things would start out in draft mode. But if I click this, uh, when I move things from Flare to Salesforce, they start out in publish status. I'm gonna leave this selected because in this exercise, I just wanna bypass draft mode. Creating, create lightning style links. So if you have links from one article to another article, when people click them, if you have this selected, those articles will always open up in lightning. Uh, mode. And uh, so if you want your end users always to be seeing things in lightning view, then you would select that. If you always want them to see things in classic view, then you deselect that. Use compression and bulk upload. So this basically just kind of speeds up the process of moving things from Flare to Salesforce. It compresses things and just uploads them all in one bulk. Uh, you might have a reason to deselect that. Um, but most people will probably keep that selected. Destination ID down here, or this GUID. This is auto-generated when you create your destination file. And so you don't really need to do anything. This is just an ID that's used um, for this published log to uh, know what to do with things. And so the only time when you would probably ever need to generate click generate good and, and have a different ID is if you had this destination file, it was all done. And then you decided, hey, I want to create another destination file. I already have all those settings in there. I'm just going to come over here in the project organizer, copy and paste this to create a copy of this for another collection of content that I want to publish. If you do that, then you probably in that copy, then you want to go in and click generate good to have a separate ID than the other one. And then there's view URL. This is simply an internal shortcut kind of deal. So you can put in any URL you want in here. So your, um, your stuff up on Salesforce, you could put in the URL here. You think I can, I can't always remember what the URL is. So, okay, put it in here. Then when you click this button, it just opens it up in the browser. And we have madcapsoftware.com in here by default. So if I clicked this, the madcapsoftware.com website would open. Uh, you could put ebay.com in here and this thing would open that. So it's really just for your use if you want a quick way to get to your URL. And then upload at the end, this, this stuff has to do with the log file. So you can't deselect the first one because you must have uh, the log file. But you do have the options down here. You can select upload only changed files. So if you're doing publishing and then you make changes in Flare and you publish again, well, this will speed things up because it's only gonna bother with the files that have changed and the stuff that's unchanged is just leaves those alone, makes things faster. Remove outdated published files. So maybe you published from Flare to Salesforce and then later you decide, oh, I don't need this topic anymore. You delete it republish, okay, then now it's gonna get rid of that outdated um, file up on Salesforce. I'm gonna deselect this one through this exercise just because I'm gonna go through some testing, some scenarios here, and I just want to um, publish and then I'm gonna delete things on Salesforce and repo. I just wanted to publish everything again. Uh, but when I'm ready for real live publishing, I, I would probably click this and keep it selected so things go faster. So really, those are all the fields in the destination editor. A lot of fields, a lot to, you know, understand. But the great thing is once it's set up, it is set up and you rarely need to go in and, and change things. So I'm going to save this 
And then we're going to move on to the next section where we talk about setting up, creating and setting up our target. Now, the next thing that we want to do, now that we have our destination file, we want to set up our target. So let's hop in to Flare and do that. Okay, I showed you before, I ha already have an HTML5 target. Maybe I wanna use this target for something else, a full help system, whatever. But I want to create a separate target just for my Salesforce stuff. And it's gotta be uh, clean XHTML. So I right click my targets folder in the project organizer and select add target brings up this dialogue. Uh, you can give it any name you want. I already have Salesforce typed in here. Now I want to come over to output type and select clean XHTML and click add. So now we've got a target with that correct format that we need. Adds it over here. We've got the editor on the right. Now we just need to go through and set the things that, at, at minimum that we really need. There's a whole bunch of tabs, a whole bunch of fields in here. Most of it we're going to ignore. Uh, some may apply to your situation, some may not, um, but these at minimum are the things you wanna do. On the general tab, you want to go into your master TOC field and select the TOC that is dedicated for, to your Salesforce uh, output. And so I'm gonna select that one. I already created one called Salesforce. Then down here, this is the really important checkbox, convert style sheet styles to inline, to inline styles. That's how we're gonna keep our formatting. And it's gonna be populated in that rich text field. Then conditional text, I'm not gonna do anything in here cause I haven't even created um, a particular condition for hiding things from Salesforce. But if you did, which is a really common way to to exclude things from Salesforce, you would go in here and you would tell uh, for that condition, you would tell uh, Flare to exclude it. Now I'm gonna skip variables. I'm gonna come down to publishing. This is where Flare will list all of your destination files. So you only have one row in here because we've only created one destination file. If I had created 35 destination files, I would see 35 rows in here. And you just look at the one, that has to do with your Salesforce with this collection of Salesforce content. And you go, yeah, this is the one I wanna publish that. Select that, gonna skip these, go down to advanced. There are just a few fields in here I wanna talk about. These two right here, these check boxes include CSHID meta tag, include TOC path meta tag. Those have to do with these options that we saw on the destination file right here for uh, URL naming. So if you select CSH identifiers or the topic path, you one of those options, then you would want these selected to make sure that that meta tag is included. Now, keeping them selected here, even though we're not using that in this first scenario, uh, it's not gonna hurt anything. So we'll just keep them selected. Content to include. So we talked about the three ways to exclude content. One was in this, um, in this destination file in this exclusions field. That's one way. The second way is conditions. We just talked about that. And this is the third way. And so you can select, click this drop down, and you've got three options. You can say, hey, I want to, I just want to include all the content, <laughs> um, whether it's in the TOC or not, uh, unless one of these other uh, options, the conditions or that exclusions field keeps them out. You just say, I just want all content. Or you can select one of these others that have to do with, okay, what's in your TOC directly or indirectly. For this first go around, let's just keep all content selected. Those are the fields that we're interested in now. So we're just going to click save on that. And now we're ready to move on. And we're gonna actually, in this next section, we're gonna build and publish some output. We're gonna look at things on, uh, on Salesforce, see how it all looks, and then make some tweaks after that. Okay, cool deal. We're getting there. We have created the three main file types that we need, the TOC, the target, the destination file. We've got our content in topics, and so now we're ready to, to build and view it. So let's do that. Okay, so at the top of my target, I'm just gonna select build. And this opens up the uh, builds window pane at the bottom of the interface. And this is going to go really fast because it's a tiny little product uh, project. And you can see that it finished already. 
successful. There's no warnings, no errors, um, no ignored warnings, nothing, nothing at all in there. And then I can go, okay, that was good. So I click publish and now it's going to run, it adds another row and it's going to go through the publishing process. Now, this is another area where you could hit potentially an issue. And that's true whether you're in doing the build or the publish. If you hit a snag and it actually prevents this thing from completing successfully, you'll see red and you'll see um, a number in the errors column over here. Now, the, if this happens for you, the first thing that I would do is open up my build log and see if I can figure it out. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So this is gonna just complete just here momentarily. It's almost finished, there it is, it's done. Now you can see I didn't have any errors either way. And this is what's gonna happen most of the time. It's just gonna go and, it, and it's just gonna be fine. Uh, but if you do hit a snag, select the row, whether it's generating it or building it, wherever the error happened, click open build log. <clears throat> it opens up this page and you've got these three tabs, messages, warnings, errors. Now, if you hit an error that prevents the thing from completing successfully, you'll have error text in here. Maybe you can figure it out from the text. Maybe you can't. Uh, if you can, great. Then you go back and try to fix it and go through it. If you can't figure it out, the next thing I do is I go to the, the messages tab, which is just a running log of everything that was happening as the process was happening. You can see it started at the top, go all the way, and I would go all the way to the bottom. So if you hit a snag, you can see here it says publish complete. So everything was fine. But if it wasn't, it would at least let you know what was, what was going on when it had the problem. <clears throat> and if you still can't figure it out from there, just contact tech support. Uh, that's what they're there for. They're awesome. They'll help you. And the, they'll be able to look at your log and, and, and ask you questions and, and work through it. Just remember, this is two companies kind of working uh, on the same process together. So you got Madcap Software, you got Salesforce. It's, it's possible there could be a bug on either side. Uh, but the main thing is don't worry about it. Don't freak out. Just contact tech, tech support and uh, get through it. So this is all successful. Now what we want to do is go up to uh, Salesforce and see how things look. Okay, so up on Salesforce, I've got uh, these quick links here. I'm going to select article management to go look at my articles. I have draft articles selected. Nothing's in there. Remember, I bypassed draft mode, went straight to published articles. So if I select that, there's all my stuff. And it's not that many articles. It was a small project, but everything's in there. Uh, to give you an, ex an uh, example, Amazon Fire HD7 is a topic that was not in my TOC, and it wasn't excluded by any of the other means, and so it was included. Now, there's also the idea of categories, and if we come over here on the left and we start selecting different categories in here that we've got, there's nothing in there. And if I selected another one, smartphones. There's got, not going to be anything in here either. Well, why is that? Because I didn't select one of those options in Flare to map to the TOC. I just said, hey, just put everything in my default, in my default category, which is other. And so if you select that, everything's in there. So that is how that came out. Now, another thing I want to show you, let's open up Consumer Electronics. Let's open up this article. These articles, I don't really have much content in, content in them at all, uh, but notice the URL name. We selected that auto-generate option and, and it did. That's the URL uh, name that was given to it. Also, so I just have placeholder text in the article, but I did include this, this link in here, this cross-reference to Amazon Fire HD7 and notice that the link is active because that topic, that Amazon Fire topic was included. So that is what it looks like with our first set of files. So our, our first set of settings that we chose, but let's go back into Flare and let's uh, choose some different things and see what changes. All right, so back in Flare, let's make a few changes. Let's go to our destination file and let's scroll up to category mapping. And 
before we just said, hey, put everything in that default category. Well, let's now map things. Let's map our TOC to category names. And we can also select this to remove stale mappings if we had published and it, and it put things in, uh, it matched up the categories and then we make changes to Flare. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna remove those mappings that are no longer relevant uh, in case that's uh, needed. So uh, categories, we're gonna leave this default category to other because maybe some things don't go into a certain category because of the mapping and that needs a place to go. So we put them here in, uh, in our other default category. So that's one thing. Another thing is come down here to URL naming. And this time let's select use CSH identifiers. Now, if you're not using context sensitive help, you haven't gone into that before, that won't mean anything to you. But if you're using context sensitive help, you can use these things that you've already set up. So I have an alias file in Flare, and I'm gonna open that up just to show you. I've got a bunch of identifiers already created, and you can see that these are all uppercase with underscores between each one. And so what's gonna happen now, because I selected this option, those identifiers are gonna be used for the, uh, for the uh, URL name. Okay. Now let's go into our target and see what changes we need to make here. So the CSH ID meta tag, now this thing is important to have it selected since we selected that CSH ID. Um, another thing that we wanna change in here, one thing that we wanna change in here is content to include, oh, before I forget, alias file, this also has to do with CSH. So I only have one alias file, and so it's going to use it no matter what. But if I uh, if I had multiple ones in here, I'd want to make sure I selected the right one. So I'll just select that. Content to include. Before we said, hey, just include all content. Now let's select this one. Content linked directly from the TOC. So now it's going to look at our uh, TOC file. Let's find it. Uh, there it is. So now it's gonna look at our TOC file and it's going to include things based on this. All right, so a little bit different than what we did before. All right, so let's save this, let's rebuild. And once that's done, let's republish and then we'll see what changes were made. Now, before we open that up, notice that I got a warning here. I didn't have it before, so what's happening? So I click that and I go open build log. What's wrong? It says cross-reference to excluded file removed from the output. So here's what happened. Um, rem remember I showed you this electronics topic, this article in Salesforce, and I had this placeholder text and this link here to Amazon Fire HD7. Well, Amazon Fire, this topic right here, is not in our TOC, as I mentioned before, but it's linked from this topic, which is in the TOC. And I just told it, hey, only include stuff that's in the TOC. And so it's saying, okay, we'll do it, but we're gonna give you a warning. And what's the warning? Well, the warning is that this link is no longer going to exist once we look at it on Salesforce. I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. So this is running while we're talking it's not gonna be there anymore. So what's gonna happen is the text is still gonna be there, but it's not gonna be a link. And that'll be weird because it'll say, see Amazon Fire HD7, but you can't click on anything. So I'll be back in a moment when this finishes publishing. Okay, so it finished publishing. I'm gonna go to Salesforce and I need to uh, refresh in order to see all of the stuff in here. I'm on published articles. Now I had, before previously, and I need to clear my filter, before I had deleted everything that I had previously published up to Salesforce and I, I, I archived it and I, and I deleted it. So this is the fresh look at what's happening. Now, looks a lot the same, but there aren't as many files in here, published articles. Uh, that's because I limited it. And remember that Amazon Fire one? Well, that's not in here anywhere. It was left out as we told it to do. Now, if we go over here to our categories, I can go into something. Remember, H Hewlett Packard before didn't have anything? Well, now it does. Uh, 
because we mapped according to the category names in the TOC and others are the same smartphones. Okay, there's some stuff in there. And I could also go into my default category and you're gonna see, oh, I've got, a, I've got an article in there too because it didn't fit according to the mapping. So those are some different things that happened. Uh, let's open up that same article that we had before and let's see. Okay, now the URL name is based on that CSH ID because we told it to do that. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see, all right, there's that place where we had the link, but the link's not there because we kept that article out. All right, so that is uh, another way, uh, you know, just another set of options. Let's go make one more change. I'm gonna delete these things in Salesforce. Let's make one more set of changes and see what happens. Okay, so once again, let's make a couple of changes. Let's go to our destination file. And this time up here on category matching, let's say that we want to map things according to unique names, not the category names, but unique names. And if you remember before I showed you in the TOC that I had uh, smartphones is here and it's down here. And the category unique names in uh, Salesforce where this one was smart underscore phone. So I'm gonna make the change here because I wanted to map to that. And this one was smart underscore phones underscore computers. And there could be others in here that have different unique names too, but I'm just gonna make changes to these just, just to show you. Okay, so we made that change. And the other thing that we want to do in here is let's go down to our URL naming. And this time let's choose one of these other uh, options. Let's do topic path with a prefix. So it's gonna be whatever the topic or article is and we can add any prefix we want. And let's just put madcap in here and the preview changes accordingly. Cool, gonna save that. Let's go to our target and see if we wanna change anything in there and we do. Uh, we're going to leave everything the same except for this content to include. Now let's select content linked directly or indirectly from the target. So remember before, everything was based on the TOC. But we had that one topic, the Amazon Fire, that was linked from one of these topics and it wasn't included. Now because this topic, Amazon Fire, is linked from one of these topics in here, it will be included because it's an indirect link. So we're going to save this. We're going to rebuild, and that's going to finish here just momentarily, and then we will publish, and I'll be back, and we will check it out on Salesforce. Okay, so it finished uh, publishing. Let's go up to Salesforce one more time. I am going to reload this page so we can see what was published. All right, so a lot of articles in here. This time, Amazon Fire is in here, it was included. And if I open up this topic on consumer electronics, you're gonna see, all right, the URL name's different. We have our prefix and then content electronics come down here. All right, now our link is back because we included that article. So that's just uh, a few ways that changing uh, options and settings can affect your output. Uh, Again, practice this and you're going to land on the thing that works best for you. All right, so there you go. We made it. We made it all the way through. Now that you've seen the whole video, hopefully you have a really good understanding of things that you just need to understand on the Salesforce side, on the Flare side, uh, going through the process, what all the options mean, what all the settings are. And the fact that you can just practice publishing until you get just what you want and know what to do if you do happen to hit any snags. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll talk to you next time.